Hello there and welcome to my YouTube channel Julia McNeil Crafts. So today is another video where we are playing with the GMC Designs Curious Wonders collection but today instead of Alice we have Belle. A Belle from Beauty and the Beast. So the lovely Denise on my design team when I was sort of sharing ideas of things I wanted to do this was one of the most popular houses and it got a lot of votes. Um, and But Denise said, it just keeps reminding me of Cogsworth, not Alice in Wonderland. So I was like, why not? Let's go in that direction. It shows how versatile these stamps are. I think these stamps are a, a nod to Alice in Wonderland. But that girl on her own is just a girl. Um, that's a, f a funny little house. It doesn't have to be Alice in Wonderland. So today, let's go for Belle. Now, obviously, the colourways aren't the colourways that I have chosen um, to use when designing the paper pack. But... I did do some tea staining. So that is the difference after I tea stained the papers and they have a much more vintagey look and I plan to make a junk journal with this but I thought before I do that actually the vintage version of it will go really well with Belle. So let's have a little play with her today. Okay so I have pulled out this paper which has been tea stained mostly because it's got the yellow in and then because I was actually drying it off in my oven <laughs> I ended up getting the lines of the thing but I think with regards to mixed media, that's awesome. So I am just going to tear a square of this, roughly two size. Put that to the other side with Alice on it for when I do do my journal. Right, and I am just going to rip and tear some of these edges. Now I've not particularly coloured this up in a vintage style. I just think the colourways go better. And this is... This is what's fun about these papers. They are, they can be the finished product. Like I have this particular paper here, I painted myself. So I use my Jane Davenport paints and then the yellow three sun things have been done using Faber Castell gelatos. We've got some white gesso splatters on there. Um, then I've got some gel pen. Um, I coloured up Alice and, um, and the flowers in my alcohol markers, combined it all together. So, like, I've done the mixed media part for you if you're nervous about mixed media. But it can still, if you love your mixed media, it can still just be a base, you know? It's like, it, you can still make it your own. So this is going to seem really ironic <laughs> because I have taken, knocked the colour out of it, going for a vintage look, and now I'm going to put some colour back in. Um, I'm going to add some of the bright yellows. So I'm going to bring it back a little bit as well. Because why not? Why not indeed? So I've got a little bit of squeezed lemonade. And then I am going to put some of the fossilised oops, fossilised amber. And we're going to really build up the look of that yellow there. Like so. So yeah, just use them as a as a base. Do what you want with them. Rip them up, tear them, scrunch them, cover them in ink, paint all over them if you don't like them. <laughs> if there's one in the pack that you really don't like, it's fine. Slap Jess over it. Right, I'm going to tear this as well so that we'll continue that sort of torn, torn look. And I will most likely do a little bit of colour tinting around the edge of this too. So yeah, I have to thank Denise for, for that idea. That was down to her. I love the fact that when you spend time with crafty people and you talk to crafty people, that, you know, people see different things and then an idea they have, have bounces another idea that you might not have thought of, but then you come up with a new idea with that. And then it's like, there's a saying, creativity is contagious, pass it on. And I think it's just, it is the example of that. You know, it's like her creativity saw something different and then my creativity was like, all oh, right, okay, well, I'll do this with it then. <laughs> so it's great. I've now got another element and then I'll start seeing my stamps differently. And as I said, it's funny because I didn't actually design this collection to be Alice in Wonderland. Um, <laughs> I know that sounds daft, yeah. I do love Alice in Wonderland, but it's more, it was more of a nod to it because um, I first drew Hattie when I started drawing and my daughter helped me to name her. Um, I'd called her um, 
Hattie, I think. And then my daughter says, what about Hattie Harris? And I loved it. Um, so that is what we ended up calling her. And be when it came to do my first physical collection, she just had to be a part of it. Um, and so I'd drawn that, and I'd drawn all the girl with hearts, which could be Queen of Hearts, but to be honest, she doesn't look like an evil queen. She's a sweet little thing, so she can just be a little girl handing a heart balloon. Um, so I think this collection, although it is Alice in Wonderland, it can be whatever you want it to be. Right, so I think that has, that's working quite good. Now, I'm thinking that it would be quite nice to have some extra little clouds. So I'm just going to grab my cloud stamp. Okay, so I've grabbed my cloud stamp and I'm just going to, um, in these colours here, stamp a whole load of the clouds and then I am going to cut them out. So, so you're not watching loads and loads of fussy cutting, which might not be overly interesting. Um, I've just turn the stamp there so they don't all have a vertical line through it, I can sort of mix it up a little bit. Um, I will just pop you on fast forward while I finish this process. <music> Okay, so I think I'm just going to do a little bit of doodling before I stick this down. I'm going to do like a stitch effect doodle. So what I do is I draw a little circle and pull a line, draw a circle and pull a line. A lot of people that I see, and I'm not saying there's anything wrong with it, is they'll do a stitching effect like that. Um, and that looks great. I like to do it like this because it looks like hand stitching. Um, like a back stitch that's like a continuous line, but there's like a little... Um, dot in, in between. So I like to do that. So I'm just going to do that all around this and around the main mat and around the card. So again I'm going to pop you on fast forward. <laughs> Okay, so while I was on fast forward, I also just glued the card together as well. Um, and just because, you know, you know how to glue. <laughs> and as you'll see, I put 3D foam on the back of um, the main element. Um, but I also added a bit of glue and it's just because it gives it a little bit of wiggle room. So you've got a little bit of maneuverability so that... You know, if it's not exactly straight or whatever, you can you can just move it about a little bit. So I'm just going to add some of these um, clouds because I did think it looked quite quite good. And we'll build up build up the scene a little bit. So we'll add some of these down, and then I've got a load of cutout flowers which I'm hoping to use. I like I don't know I've got the thing about um, doing clouds in funny colours. I just think it adds to the quirkiness of it. <laughs> okay, so I think that's probably fairly balanced. I'm going to maybe chop, chop that one down a bit so we've just got a tiny bit of it peeking, peeking out from behind the card. Okay, what have we got? One, two, three, four, five, six. So I'll do another one so that we've got an uneven number. And hopefully we should be good to go. Maybe there. Okay. So I have a envelope of bits that I have gradually been cutting out of um, the paper. So I'm just going to pull. <laughs> so I've uh, done all these so that they're all sort of like cut out and ready to go. So I can just um, play. It's like I've got a 
pack of embellishments ready to go. So we're now going to, it's quite, oh, it's quite vintage colours we've got here. So um, we're now just going to add a pop of colour just by putting some of um, these flowers in. So I think that'll just lift it a little bit. And then what I may do is do some yellow splashes. Because why not? Um, let's see. So the good thing is there's about three different papers that have these flowers on them. So you can get them in different sizes. Um, now not all of these sentiments are Alice in Wonderland. Um, so that one's every adventure starts with the first step. So that could maybe do. Um, I like that one. A smile is a curve that sets everything straight. So possibly. Let's have a little look. So I've shaped some of these flowers as well. I'm thinking that's looking okay though. Yeah, I quite like that. What I'm going to do is just grab some thread. Okay, so I have got some yellow thread. This is from We Are Memory Keepers. And, um, yeah, I bought it when I bought the stitching thingy tool that I've never really used. Um, but I do use embroidery thread. I also have a big collection of embroidery thread because I've done a lot of cross stitch. So um, I know this will probably be going up ages after the particular video that I'm about to talk about. But I actually did a video where I included a cross stitch in one of my mixed media products, projects. So um, that's quite an interesting. Interesting. I like, I just love mixing um, my different crafts. I think you, you just can. It's like, I do have a real thing and not pigeonholing yourself. Just use the skills that you've got and transfer it in lots of different ways. Right, I'm making a bit of a pig's ear of this. What I'm wanting to do is just basically create a big mess of thread <laughs> and glue that down. So I've got, um, waiting for my hot glue to get going. So I am going to, it's just, I've just turned it on, so it's just going to take a little minute. It's not quite hot enough yet. It's getting there. Right. Get that going. Oops. And then I'm going to literally just shove the thread into that. And it just, it creates a really nice textured um, background. So now I'm just going to get my flowers. And once I stick those down, that will adhere the thread and it'll just become this tiny little bit that um, pokes through. So it sort of starts off looking a bit of a hot mess um, but then it just becomes this really little element that just adds a bit of extra detail. So I'm going to just pop those in like that. Got a little string. We'll pull that off. Okay. Now with the other part I'm going to do the same over here. Just drop it in. Put a big blob of glue down first and drop that in. So I kind of like to make sure I've not done it very well on this one, so I'll have to fix it. Is tuck the ends in so that when you see stuff behind the flowers, it's sort of like nice loops, it's not just a random straggly <laughs> end. So I'll get my flower and oops that down like so and then I think we're probably almost there we just need to look at putting some like final final touches down put that down there okay I'll just fiddle with those so I'm going to go with this sentiment which says every adventure starts with a first step because Belle went on an adventure too didn't she she realized her dad was missing and took that first step to go and rescue our father and then ends up meeting the Beast and Cogsworth that we have just here. So I'm just edging that in black like I always do and we'll stick that down and then I'm going to pop a few gems on. I've managed to find some nice sort of yellowy goldy gems which I think will go quite nicely. So I'm just going to stick that down there. Okay and then we have these said they're sort of like vintage. Oh. You can't see them on the screen, sorry. I've got these um, vintage gold and yellow gems. So I'm just going to pop some of those in the flowers 
and then sprinkle some round about. And then as I said, I'm just really fancying yellow splashes for some reason. Um, so I will do that in just a moment. So I'm just picking up the gems with the edge of my uh, scissors, clearly not very successfully, sorry. It wasn't even on screen, so making for very interesting, <laughs> very interesting viewing. Okay, so pop those, pop those on. Okay, and then I'll maybe, as I said, just going to cluster. I like to do little sort of sprinkles of gems coming from a from a cluster like this. It's almost like um, when you get a bunch of flowers, you've got the little filler flowers that just make it. It suddenly goes from looking like you know a bunch of. I don't know, it can look quite heavy, um, it sort of softens it um, and looks looks more meant to be when you've got those little fl filler flowers in and sometimes it's those little filler elements um, in our cards as well that give it just that tiny bit of difference. So I'm just going to put a few down here as well and then I think we will be ready to go with our splashes. Okay, so I've got my Kurotake Gansi Tambi paints and I've just activated a few of the yellows because I'm thinking I am going to go for a few different ones and I'm going to add some splashes. So I've just covered Bell up um, so that we don't end up with a big blob of yellow in the middle of her face. Um, so I've done that and yeah. I'm hoping once we reveal this, we will be all good to go. So yeah, I've gone for three different shades of yellow there. And we will see how that looks. Take that off. Okay, so I'm thinking now that sometimes when you do this um, and you've masked a bit off, it looks too empty in certain areas. So just there, so I've just added a few more and that's us. So I'll just move this sort of paint palette thing out the road so that we can see the card. So here we have created a card um, with Belle from Beauty and the Beast out of a Alice in Wonderland collection. So I'm hoping this shows that you can use this collection to take in whatever direction that you wish. If you have enjoyed it here, please do consider liking and subscribing and I will be back again very soon. Okay, take care then and goodbye.